Um, so just, just a quick, uh, before I start, just a quick disclaimer. Basically, this um, webinar is purely for education purposes. Um, and IG accepts no responsibility for any use that be may, may be made of this information and consequences that result. Okay, great. So let's move on to the charts at the moment. Um, okay, for those of you that who are new to the webinar, right? So um, basically, Ryan will do his fundamental macroeconomic analysis. And on my part, I will do a lot of um, technical analysis on the market. So essentially, every instrument I look at, I'm just trying to define what phase it's in. Because essentially, the market has only three phases, whether it's uptrend, downtrend, or consolidation. So this is what I use to form my bias. Um, if, if, for example, if uptrend, my bias is bullish, I look for clues in the market to give me signs that I should get in on the long side. If it's on a downtrend, uh, the opposite. So, um, yeah, I mean, I mean, the bias is very important. Setting a bias is very important because that's where you have a conviction on what you want to do. Okay, the worst scenario is that you try to buy just because you see a green candle and when the thing starts coming down, you close the buy and start selling. It and start selling. So, that's where you get very mixed and this, uh, very confused with how the market is moving. Okay, so I use a lot of price section, a lot of support resistance and this is typically typically how my charts look like. Okay, let me load it up. Okay, so I'm going to start with the indi indices first. Okay, let's move on to S&P. Now, I'm not a big fan of how most of the indices are moving, like S&P, Dow Jones, Hang Seng. Um, basically, for the way I trade is I look for very nice established trends. And what the um, indices are doing right now is not... I mean, it is trending to the upside, yes, but just the manner uh, of which it is moving, um, I'm just a bit more cautious. So, if you look at the S&P, let me just um, bring this up. Okay, if you look at the S&P, this is a weekly chart. Okay, you see all the funny circles and lines I drew. This is what we spoke about two weeks, two webinars ago, or the last webinar. And basically, I'm just showing the price section. So we made a series of higher high, higher lows all the way from 2013. And basically, we have an uptrend. In October this year, was a bit of a tricky situation. We made a lower low, which actually normal signals either a consolidation or a downtrend. But immediately, the market did a V-shaped recovery, something like this. And it actually breached a new high, the previous high of 2020 level. Okay, so... Right now, the market, yes, it is back on uptrend because it broke a new high. Um, but if you look at the lower time frame, right, if you see the manner on how the S&P rebound, and if you see for the past five or six daily candles, it's a bit sideways movement. So I guess the market is taking a bit of a pause and trying to decide where it wants to go. Now, our job as retail traders is not to try to push the market, but basically to follow it. So if the market is moving sideways, or if you think that it's not a good level to enter, better to wait out and see what happen, what, what will happen first. Okay? Uh, because right now, even though if you're bullish, right, we are just lingering around this uh, 2030 level to 2040 level. Um, nothing really much happening here. So even if you're bullish, you need to find support at least back to the previous high of 2020. I mean, if you take a closer look at, for example, the um, 8 hours chart. All right, I'll try to bring in more different time frames to my analysis, okay? So I just want, want to illustrate and show you how to use multiple time frames to plan a trade. Yesterday, I did a presentation for some clients on how to use multiple time frame to plan a trade. So I'll start incorporating that to my webinar so that uh, you can incorporate that into your trading and hopefully it helps you. So if you look at the eight hour chart on the S&P, very sideways actions, all right? After you broke a new high, I think traders are reluctant to push it another notch higher. But let's just see, look, use this range as a gauge um, around the 20, 2030 to 2045 level. Let's use this range as a gauge to see what might happen next, okay? Nothing much to look at at the S&P. 
Now I just want to bring your attention to the Hang Seng. Okay, um, let me go back to the weekly chart. Okay, this is how the weekly chart looks like. Okay, where we are right now, you see, now you know why I do like the indices, uh, how the price action is looking recently, because look at this. Yet last week, it made a nice push up, broke above 24,000. I was more bullish because 24,000 seems to be a nice resistance. It broke above it, nice big bullish engulfing candle. And now this is another very, almost like a, a, a reverse candle, all right, if the weekly candle closes where we are right now. All right, so a bit of mixed signal here. Now, as long as we stay above this 23.550 level, I'm still inclined to be more bullish on the longer term. Um, if you look at the daily chart, use this uh, trend line as a guide if you're trading the Hang Seng, okay? So price action-wise, very mixed, very mixed because this whole rally over here, okay, was basically reverse on yesterday's price action. So let me just draw up the pin. So basically this whole rally here, the whole thing was reverse, right, on yesterday's price action. But one thing you might want to look out for is um, basically this trend line. Okay, use this trend line as your guide of what might happen. Okay, so if we break this level of 23.550 or 23.600, then I'm more inclined to think that back to the weekly chart, we might make a push back to this support trend line, this long-term support tr trend line here, around the 23,000 level. Okay, so just be a bit more um, careful of the housing based on the price action is... It looks a bit more bullish, but the daily chart is a bit more mixed, simply because of what happened yesterday. Okay, so just bear in mind on Hang Seng. Key levels, look at again, 23.550, 23.600. And if it breaks below that, it might go back to this trend line around the 23,000 level. Okay, so that's for the Hang Seng. Uh, so I have a question here. Does, back to the SMP. Um, okay, thanks for coming, Mr. Raman. Um, does... Can we say that S&P is barely above the support of 2020 and unable to move up? Does it indicate that bearish mood is setting in? Yes, yeah, possible. I wouldn't call it bearish so so immediately. I mean, I would say it's a bit more exhaustion, a bit more sideways action. Yes, it, it, it barely broke 2020. Okay, it went about to high about 2045 or so. Um, but it's still bullish. The chart is still bullish. Now, um, let me just go back to S&P yeah, since we're talking... See if we have a question on that. So, I mean, if you look at the daily chart, okay, yes, the momentum to the upside once we broke the 2020 level is not the strongest. But the reason why I say I don't like such price actions is because there's no healthy pullback. The way, the manner that it rebound after it tested 18, uh, 1820 or so, the manner it rebound, it rebound, it just shot up and there's no nice pullback. All right, so is the, the, just the manner in moves are a bit more wary about where where the actual bulls or bears are. So yes, you are right that you know it, it, the momentum is waning, but I wouldn't be so quick to call bearish yet, unless there's a big candle down and close below 2020. Then maybe on the weekly chart, um, we'll see a, a a big candle forming somewhere here. Let me just draw this up for you. Okay, unless we see something like a big candle close below here. Okay, hopefully my drawing skills is clear enough. Okay, unless we see that, then, oops, sorry. Then perhaps, yes. Okay, then perhaps, yes. Maybe the high is not a good, it's not a uh, valid break breakout. It might be a fake, it might be a false breakout. Okay, if we see a candle close below the 2020 level again. Okay, so there's the S&P. But again, don't be too eager to just um, short it like that. Better to wait for price action to confirm it. All right? I mean, if you, are, if you are using technical analysis, always let the charts tell you what you want to do. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's the S&P. I went through Hang Seng. Um, okay, let's go through Japan. All right? Everybody's focusing on Japan, Nikkei, basically what the BOJ is doing. If you look at the weekly chart, now very bullish, no doubt about it, okay, um, just take note that there's a bit of resistance around where we are now, let me just draw, okay, 
Okay, so I just ignore the spikes that I have on my charts. Yeah. Okay, there's a bit of resistance somewhere here. Okay, around the 17, I'll call it 17,500 level. All right, on the weekly chart, 17,500 17, level, a bit of resistance there. So if you are a long-term bull of the Nikkei, um, don't be so eager just to jump on board. Make sure you plan the trade because if you are bullish, always look for support. I always repeat that. Okay, yesterday I had a discussion with a client in the seminar. He's a pure fundamental person and I'm a pure technical person. Uh, but he, he tends, I mean, he, he's beginning to believe that, yes, even though you have a fundamental view on a particular sector, a particular stock, a particular market, it's always good to use technical analysis to plan your entry. Okay, because I can say that based on what the BOJ is doing, the Nikkei will be bullish for the next one, two years. But if you enter at the wrong levels, it's still quite difficult to manage the trade. All right, so, I mean, for the um, Nikkei, I'm quite keen to see this resistance level. Uh, but essentially, hopefully, I'm, I'm hoping I will look in the smaller, lower time frame and try to take pullbacks from support level. So the most immediate support level will be around the 17,150 level, around somewhere here. If not, it might retrace all the way back to the 16,700 level. So let's let's wait and see. All right? So this is the Nikkei, but it still looks very bullish at the moment. Okay, um, any question on the indices before I move on to the Forex pairs? The DAX, sure, DAX. Okay, let me just have a quick look at the DAX. Okay, let's go to the weekly chart. Okay, this is what I drew for the DAX, I think, two webinar sessions ago. And it seems like this little channel that I drew is what the market is respecting in the moment. Okay, this is what I drew two weeks ago. And... It's, it's basically now, some clients ask me, do I have a crystal ball or things like that? No, it's, it's not, it's, I'm, I don't use crystal balls to predict the market. It's basically, I try to use price action and when I see mixed price action, I tend to try to find chart patterns. Because I remember when I drew this, right, I think we were somewhere just here. And I, I did say that, you know, the channel might not be the nicest looking channel because just one or two touches. But I'm always looking for different chart patterns whenever I see mixed price action. So what do I mean by mixed price action? Meaning that the market on the DAX broke a lower low. It broke 9,000. And the manner it rebounded just gave me mixed signals that made me more inclined to think that a consolidation is going to happen. Same thing for other indices like S&P or the Dow. It's just that for those, it broke new highs. So there's not much consolidation pattern to look out for. But for the DAX, even though it rebounded, like the other indices, it did not break the previous high set in June or the high set in August, September period. Okay, so look for this channel consolidation area to guide you for the DEX. Right now, what we um uh, look like a downtrend still within the channel. Yeah, I mean right now it, it's just a channel consolidation. All right, just a channel consolidation. I mean, essentially, a downtrend is confirmed when we form a series of lower lows and lower highs. So right now, we have two lower highs here compared to here, here compared to here, two lower highs, but we only had one lower low. So unless we break below this support here around the 8,700 level and also break below the channel, okay, so unless we break these two levels here, then maybe we can say that the downtrend has started. But right now, it's just consolidating within this channel, okay? Which means that if you are trading in a consol this consolidation pattern, just make sure that you take your trades off key support and resistance levels, okay? If you're a long-term trader, especially, you do not want to be caught in the middle because that's what I call no man's land, okay? If you're a long-term trader. Now, if you're a shorter term trader, it's still good to bear in mind that the weekly is a consolidation pattern. But if you're a shorter term trader, uh, let's take a look at the daily, for example. Daily chart looks a bit more bullish, isn't it? Okay, it looks similar to what the um, S&P is doing. Um, just take note of this short term support level around here, around the 9180 to 9200 level, somewhere around here. Okay, short term support here on the daily chart. But it depends on what kind of trader you are, really. I mean, for me, I like my weekly and daily charts to be telling the same story. If not, I wouldn't touch it. 
Okay, right now it's a bit of a mix. So that's why this is my, this is my story for indices for the past two three weeks basically. So this is this just my view. But if you like to trade it, ask yourself which time frame are you trading it off from? Okay, because daily is on a bullish trend, a bit of consolidation as well. But weekly is just a big channel consolidation. Okay, so it's very important to manage your expectation based on the time frame that you're trading it from. All right, so um, that's the decks for you, single. Singapore blue chip. Okay, let me just have a quick look at the Singapore blue chip. Blue chip. Uh, okay, last time I looked at this, it was mixed as well. Let me just have a quick look. Okay, so it's quite similar to the Hang Seng, isn't it? Okay, so Singapore blue chip. Now, um, this level here, okay, this line that I drew around the 371 level was a key resistance that I was looking at. Okay, right now, whether it's bullish or bearish on a weekly chart is really quite mixed. Okay, because it's just consolidating in this big ascending triangle. If you see, this is the um, horizontal flat line, and this is the ascending trend line. And it's just forming into a tighter, tighter range. Okay, so on a weekly chart, I wouldn't call it bullish or bearish. I think it's more of a consolidation pattern. The interesting thing is that it broke above the 371. If we can live above that, most probably we might go back to the high around the 384 level. And let's take a closer look on the shorter term time frames. All right, if you notice, all the indices are doing the same thing. Okay, all, all the indices are doing the same thing. So. It's it's um the way we bound from from the drop in October is just quite interesting. If you look at the daily chart, it is bullish, okay, simply because you make a higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, and another higher high. So this is bullish for me on the daily chart, okay. But this three seven one level, remember this nine I drew was a key resistance level. Now as long as we are able to live above the um, 371 level then I'm inclined to think that we are slightly more bullish the daily chart is driving the pair and it might push up all the way to the highs around 380 to 384 but if this week's price section shows me that it doesn't want to live above this line and it comes back down here okay and it break the previous short-term support or 370 here then I'm more inclined to think that this break above the 371 resistance is not a good break to the upside and it might start coming down again. Okay, so this level here is still quite key to me. Right around the 371. So which means that if let me just delete the drawing tool. So if this 371, if I see some form of price action here for the week back below that 370 level. Then I'm more inclined to think that it might come down to test this trendline support. Okay, but as long as we stay above the 371 and make a push higher, there's every chance that we might come back to the next level of resistance around 380 to 384. Okay, now you see the when, when markets are consolidating, right? Um, it's quite a difficult read sometimes, all right, because it's basically based on levels. And and how whether the levels are respected, whether the breakout is clear or not. Okay, just where when it's consolidation is a bit tougher to trade, but you need to basically really be very disciplined when it comes to support and resistance when it comes to consolidation, especially. Okay, so that is the um, Singapore blue chip for you. I have another question for Mr. Rama. Why do you call the daily chart on the decks bullish? Sure, let me just go through that again. Um, so let me just move this. Let me go back to the decks, just a quick one, yeah, before I exceed my time as usual. <laughs> um, okay, so why do I call the daily chart bullish? Okay. Now, the daily chart is bullish simply because it's just making a series of higher lows. The higher highs are not as clear, but if you notice here, there's a higher low here, there's a higher low here. All right, and then you make another higher high here, another higher high here. So this is bullish for me. Okay, right now it's consolidating into a daily bullish flag scenario. So all this is bullish chart pattern as well. 
So a bullish, a daily bullish price section consolidating to a bullish flag. And what might happen that is might break, break upwards to a bullish flag. But again, don't forget there's a weekly channel resistance here. So you see how I use different time frames to plan my trade. So daily I'm bullish, but I'm always aware of what's happening in a higher time frame. So even though, yes, I said this is a bullish flag, and bullish flag theory says that it's a continuation pattern to the upside, I'm very aware that on a weekly, there's a bit of a channel resistance here. The question is, can I trade the daily chart to the upside to the weekly resistance? Absolutely, you can do that as well. You just you need to know what's happening on the higher time frame. So the reason why the daily is bullish, simply because of this price action here. Okay, it's just simply a, a series of high, high, high lows. Okay, so let's move on to Forex at the moment. Okay, now let's take a look at Euro Dollar. Okay, before I look at Euro Dollar or Pound Dollar, I want to take uh, for you to pay attention to the Euro Pound. Okay, something that I not I'm not covered Euro Pound much in the past webinars, but it's something that I think you guys should look at before you plan to trade the Euro Dollar, the Pound Dollar, because a lot of traders I speak to they tend to just stick to some majors. Okay, I trade the Euro Dollar, I trade the Pound Dollar. But if you trade those two currencies, it's good to look at the euro pound as a proxy to what's happening with the euro or the pound. Basically, you just to see which one is weaker or stronger. Okay. So, for example, if I see that the euro pound is making is on an uptrend, and I'm actually bearish on the euro dollar and pound dollar, I'm more inclined to take the pound dollar short than the euro dollar short, simply because the pound is weaker than the euro. You get what I mean? So again, if I think that the euro dot euro pound is on an uptrend, okay, let me just write this down. Yeah, if I think that the euro EU LGBP, sorry, my handwriting on this is horrendous. <laughs> if I think that the euro pound is on an uptrend, if I cheat, if I'm bearish on pound dollar and euro dollar. Okay, I'm more inclined to choose the pound dollar to short. Okay, simply because the pound is weaker than the euro. Okay, you get a little analysis. So, if you like a bit more advanced analysis, you can use the euro pound as a proxy. All right, in fact, I use the euro dollar yen as a proxy as well. So, for example, if I want to take a pound yen long or a pound dollar long, I will use the dollar yen as a proxy. Uh, it's something a little more analysis if you if you like to use those things. But basically, you can use the euro pound as a separate analysis. Of course, you can trade on it as well. So what what is interesting right now in the euro pound is that it is on a very nice downtrend. Okay, if you want to know what a nice downtrend is, euro pound is a good example. Okay, and if you notice how a change of trend works and things like that, very very good example on the euro pound. So basically, it broke a new low. Lower low there, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, another lower low, same high. So all the while we're able to break this level here. And there was no higher high mid. So it's still technically on a downtrend since middle of 20, 2013. Okay, so there's a weekly chart. It is on a downtrend since the middle of 2013. Now Right now, key level, yeah, we're still making lower lows, but right now the market is a bit more consolidating. It has made a double bottom, and there's a nice big bullish engulfing candle here. Now, I'm very, very mindful of bullish or bearish engulfing candles on a weekly chart, okay, because it tells quite a bit in terms of uh, what, what, the, what the bears or bulls are trying to do, okay? So, I mean, if you see, for example, here, the previous example, okay, let's do an example here. You see a nice bearish engulfing candle here. What happened next? Market came down. Another nice bearish engulfing candle here. What happened next? Market came down. Another, this is a bullish engulfing candle here. What happened next? Market went up. Okay, another nice bearish engulfing candle here. Market went down. So, on the weekly charts, bullish or bearish engulfing candles, I'm very keen on it. So, right now, there's a nice big bullish engulfing candle here, which Give, let me give it gives me the belief that euro might be stronger than the pound for the next one two weeks. Okay, that's assuming 
if we break a key resistance level of 80 cents. Okay, yes, it has formed a nice bullish Gavin candle. Right now, it's testing key resistance. If the euro pound breaks 80 cents, then most likely the euro will be stronger than the pound for the next one or two weeks. Okay, now looking at the daily chart, it's not, it's not, it's very clear that 80 cents level around this 80, 80 cents level here is very strong resistance. Okay, but. I'm very um, keen to look at this euro pound to see what happens for the next coming weeks. Okay, but not right now, we are testing key resistance on euro pound. All right, so moving along, now let me bring you to the euro dollar. Now, if we look at the weekly chart, okay, sorry about this, let me just close all this. Okay, so if you look at the weekly chart, Okay, sorry about that. I think it's, it's a demo account. So. Okay, so if you look at the weekly chart on the euro dollar, simply it's just on a very nice downtrend. Lower low, lower high, and lower low. It broke a new low of 125. I think it hit close to 123 one, two, level before bouncing up. So weekly chart definitely still bearish. Okay, moving on to the daily chart. Okay. Now, the daily chart is also still bearish. I would say it's still consolidating. Um, I drew this line here because this might prove to be resistance. Yesterday, we tested around here close to 126, around 125, 80 to 126, and it came down again. Okay, right now, what we are forming is what we formed a couple of weeks back. So, I think two, three webinars ago, I identified this as a bearish flag. Okay, and basically 128 was a resistance and the market came down. Right now, similar scenario, a bit of a bearish flag, smaller version. Okay, and basically it hit resistance and it came down back to the bearish uh, flag channel support. Okay, the flag support, sorry. So, unless, if, unless we break below this, I'm more inclined to think it's just sideways consolidation. But if it's consolidation, then you need to know where are your levels very clearly so use this trend line resistance as a key level okay if we break above the 12580 to 12600 if we break above this level right this level here there's a lot of resistance to me this whole level here a lot of resistance okay if it breaks above this level then I'm more inclined to think that we might come to test the 12800 level make a bigger retracement okay but if it breaks this bearish flag then maybe it's coming back to form a new low. This is a very small little channel. I think it's, it's clearer if you can see on lower time frame. But basically, use these lines to guide you to see what happened on the euro dollar. Um, overall, I'm still bearish. And unless we break the one two six, then maybe there's a change of trend on the daily chart, and we might move on to a higher retracement than one two eight. But as long as we stay below this resistance trend line or below the one two six level. They are more inclined to think that it's still consolidating and might move another leg down. All right, so that's the euro dollar for you. Um, moving on to the pound dollar. Now it's quite interesting that the pound dollar def definitely looks more bearish than the euro dollar, isn't it? Now if we look at the pound dollar daily chart, look at how it's forming clear lower lows and lower highs. So a couple of weeks back, we did a bit of consolidation. And we break a new low, lower high, lower low continuation. Let me just take away my drawing tool. So if you notice like um, lower high here, lower low, lower high, lower low. Couple of tops against no high high mate. New lower low mate, another lower high, another lower low. Right now we're just looking for another lower high and hopefully take it to a double bottom or a new lower low. So see how price action works. So don't be too keen to try to trade the reverse. I, I know a lot of clients love counter trends. So for example, when we are in this region, right, most of clients think that, oh, this is a bit of consolidation, the market is a bit exhausted, the downside, and they try to buy it up. Okay, uh, based on my years of uh, trading, I, I, I'm just sticking to a trend. Again, you can do such things, you can counter trend trade, but you need to know that you are trading a counter trend, and if it breaks a new low, you need to know when to get out. All right, try not to hold on to your losses. It's not a good thing for your psychology. 
So basically, it consolidated and it broke a new low. So the pound dollar definitely looks more bearish than the euro dollar at the moment. I mean, there are a few news releases this week, like Ryan mentioned, that might change the picture. But just bear that in mind. So this is a daily chart. Now, on the weekly chart, same thing. Pound dollar just look very bullish. I mean, if you want to see where's a good strong support that it might go to, uh, let me have a quick look. Yeah, I mean, where you want me? Let me see. One, two, one, five, five, eight, oh. Anywhere between the one five four five oh to one five five eight oh level, this level of support weekly chart is still very bearish. And when it's very bearish, I do not want to call bottoms. It's very dangerous. Okay, so unless I see a daily chart showing some form of consolidation or move to the upside, this is still bearish to me. Okay, if you look at the four-hour chart. Okay, the 4-hour chart is still bearish at the moment. Alright, so right now, the key thing you want to look out for on the shorter term time frames is basically the market just made a lower high, lower low. If it breaks this little short term support around the 15630 level, then there's every chance it might make a push lower to the support at the 15580. Okay, but again, depends. If you are bearish, you need ask yourself which time frame you want to short it from. Do you want to short it from a four-hour retracement or daily retracement, or you want to wait for a week weekly retracement? All right. So this is a very important question: which time frame you are trying to take a trade from? Okay, so that's pound dollar for you. Now, any other forex pairs that you want to look at? Oh yeah, dollar yen. Sorry. Okay, the yen has been. I mean, right now the yen is very the yen pairs is very very bullish okay there's no two ways about it it is just bullish full stop Let me just take away some of this okay so right now what you want to do for the yen pairs now some of my clients um, told me that you know for the yen pairs on the long term chart it doesn't make retracements I mean if you look at the weekly chart for example if you look at uh, how the 2013 move it just make a series of you know green candles no retracement and same thing here not much retracement so if you want to get in on the yen pairs type of trends right you can always look for a lower time frame retracement okay so if you look at the daily chart I mean look at yesterday the key thing for traders is not to be so myopic myopic meaning not to be so short-sighted so Yesterday, I noticed when um, the Japanese news came out in the morning, right? What happened was that it caused the uh, market to come down and hit 115, and some traders were a bit panicky, like, oh, it's a reversal starting and things like that. But look at what happened. I'm, I'm going to a four hour chart to give you a better look. Look at what happened. It came down, hit the support on 11550, and immediately it bounced up again. Okay, so always look for the higher time frame, even though there's a big reaction or some news on the daily chart, not daily chart, on the intraday chart, like the four hour or the one hour chart, always have a higher time frame perspective. Now, right now, we're, what we're doing in the dollar yen pair is a bit of a consolidation. It's, it's definitely on a strong uptrend. Okay, but uh, whether we can make a new high, I'm not too sure about that. Okay, let me see if I can draw something like that. Okay, so a bit of a consolidation um, towards the upside. This is a wedge, wedge basically. Just be mindful whether we can break a new high. The high that we hit on Monday morning was around the 11700. It's basically a whole number, and I think traders might respect that. So even if you are bullish, right? Right now we are need, we are quite we are not really at support. Okay. A good support level would be this line that I draw, okay, back to here around the 116 or back to 11550. So this whole level, this two few lines that I draw are support levels for you. If it doesn't break a new high or it stays below 117, then I'm more inclined to think that it might just drift back to these support levels, okay. However, if it breaks a new high, this is, is a different story. Okay, I'm more inclined to think that because we're consolidate, consolidating to this little wet here, this level is quite key. If it doesn't break, then I'm more comfortable to look for support levels around the 115 all the way to 116. Right? By just 
draw these lines for yourself so that you have a idea of where's the support. 116, 11550 and 115 region. Okay, this is a four hour chart. So if you think that there's no retracement or high time frame, all right, don't despair because there's always something you can look out for in the shorter term time frame. All right, and if you look at the daily chart, all right, you can see the lines that I drew. All right, this whole level here is quite good support. Run the 115 to 115.54. Okay, so there's dollar yen for you, but definitely very bullish. Some clients ask me, so is a good time to short right now? I'm definitely not a counter trend trader, especially against uh, BOJ. Unless you have more money than BOJ, then you might want to consider doing that. But counter trend is very, very dangerous. Okay, when um, when the market is backed by fundamentals and technicals, it's really, you know, very, very trends. You can really, really trends, and that's the story for the for the yen yen pairs at the moment. All right. So okay, let me move on to Aussie dollar. Okay, Aussie dollar. Now, let me start from the weekly chart again. Okay, again, price section is still on a downtrend because you see these circles that I drew last week. So what it has done is basically it make a very nice drop, lower low, lower high. And these two candles here is quite interesting. Look at the shadows of these two candles. All right. The 2014 low was around the 86.50 level. Now, two weeks ago, it tried, it made an assault below the 86.50 level. In fact, it went all the way to 85.50, about 100 pips below the 2014 low, somewhere here. But the market, I mean, the candlesticks form on the weekly charts is a long shadow, meaning that there were a lot of buy orders that were triggered, or there were a lot of buyers waiting at the 85.50 level. Because even though the market made a new low, the candle could not close below the 86.50 level. Slightly below, I would say, but it's still close near the 86.50. So I'm more inclined to think that the market might be consolidating a bit around this level before it decides what it wants to do. Now, does that mean that it is moving on the uptrend? No, it is still on a downtrend. It's just that it does not want to make a clear lower low yet. So it's still on a downtrend, better it might. So this is a weekly chart now. Look in the daily chart. Um, let me see. Okay, on the daily chart, right now where we are, okay, there's a lot of resistance here. Okay, right now the daily chart is simply forming some kind of like that. I go, I move on to shorter term time frame, but basically it doesn't take a lot to see that there's a lot of resistance between the 8850 and the 89 level. So a lot. Of resistance here so daily chart is still a bit of a consolidation mode let me just erase all of that okay and right now we are trying to test all this short-term resistance here okay if you look at the lower term time frame right let me just show you this okay use this as a guide for what might happen for this week this little channel here Okay, it's quite a clear, you can call it even a, a bearish flag on longer term, but it's quite a clear channel here. So the key level you'll look up for short term support is around the 87, 86.80 to 87 cents, somewhere here. Okay, because if this level breaks, right, then we might, there's a high chance that we might come back to test lows again, possibility, okay. But if you are bullish, just take note that there's a lot of resistance around the 88.50 to 88 to 89 cents level. Okay, so I would say Aussie dollar is a bit consolidating on the weekly chart. Longer term chart, uh, sorry, shorter term chart of the four hour use this channel to guide you. Okay, but if it breaks below this support, then it might come down to test the previous low again. Okay, because the daily chart is just consolidating to me. Okay, so weekly chart downtrend, daily chart build consolidation. Okay, but use that this channel here as a guide of what might happen for the week. Okay, so that's the Aussie dollar for you. Any other forex pairs that you want to look at? 
Okay, um, before I move on, I just want to mention something about the Aussie dollar again. Now, um, which time frame that you trade on is very important. Okay, so if you are trading an intraday Aussie dollar chart, some clients might ask, can I, is it, do you think it's good if I just buy it here and, and just target the channel? Yeah, it is possible. It is possible, but just be mindful that what, what the market is doing on a high time frame. Okay, so just be very um, aware of what's happening. All right, so that's the Aussie dollar for you. I'm going to move on to commodities right now. Um, first things first, gold and silver. Okay, I did mention that gold, I think I mentioned one or two webinars before. If gold breaks a 1, 2, 0, 1, level, I am definitely bearish. And what happened was that, yes, that was what happened last week. The only thing now is the way, the, um, the only concern I have now is the way it rebounded up. All right, so... Basically, back to the 1180 level around here. Okay, if you look at the candles, it's not the most convincing of breakout, isn't it? This bearish engulfing candle is a nice breakout. Candle closed below the key 1180 level. However, this candle is what I call a bit of a bullish pin candle. Okay, so it's not the most convincing of breakouts. So I'm very keen to see right now where we are is the key level around the 1180 to 1200 um, resistance level. It was support. It was very strong support than resistance. I'm very keen to see what will happen where we are right now. Because if the shorter term time frame shows a bit of bearish momentum back in play, then I'm more inclined to think that we might come down and break new lows again. Okay, the reason why I'm very keen on this level for gold is because if you look at the monthly chart, right? Uh, I think I mentioned this before in the last webinar. If you look at the monthly chart, now every time when gold breaks a key significant level, the market tends to continue in that direction for a long time, all right? Let me give you a few levels for you to digest, okay? So if you, I mean, if you notice that this is a monthly chart, it's a very long-term chart. But if you notice that if you look at 20, 2006, 2007, okay, it broke a key resistance level of around the 700. And when it broke above, look at how many months it started trending upwards. Yes, it came down, but we still stayed above the 700 support. Same thing, in 2009, when we broke a key resistance around the 990 or 1000 level, it continued upwards. Same thing for 2010. When it broke the 1180 level, look at how far it continued upwards. Okay? And same thing here. This is around 2013, I would say. When it broke key support of around the 1530 level, it starts going downwards. So where we are right now is a very precarious or critical level because if the price action stays below the 1180 level, then a trend might continue to the downside. Okay, so let's go back to the weekly chart, or let's go to the daily chart right now. So this, which is why I'm a bit more, in, I'm very interested to see what happens here. On the daily chart, it made a new high. So this might be a start on the uptrend. Okay, for those of you who want to know price action, this is called a higher low, higher high. So I want to see whether the daily chart can sustain its uptrend. And if we break, clear break above the 1180, 120 level, then maybe it wants to reverse to the upside, okay? But it seems that it might, it might do something like this, okay? It might do something like this. So let me just draw this up. Something like that. Okay, again, it's not the nicest uh, channel, but I'm just trying to draw some kind of pattern to try to assume what it might want to do. So I'm just very keen to see what happens around these levels here. Okay, because this resistance get respected, then yes, it might move lower. All right. Um, looking at the weekly chart again, another scenario that you might want to look at is if it makes that new high, right? Maybe it just wants to hit this resistance level here before it comes down further. Okay, so just look at the weekly chart and daily chart for gold very interesting levels we are we are at now so next week will be a better picture okay just look at this trend line look at around the 1200 1180, uh, 1180 level to see what happens there on shorter shorter term time frame 
Okay, so let me move on to silver. Okay, so I'm losing my voice already. So let me just wrap it up after I do silver. Um, silver weekly chart. Okay, if you know, compare silver and gold, um, silver is definitely more bearish than gold. Okay, so I have a question about gold from Mr. Tiam. Uh, okay, weekly and monthly is the downtrend. Bias is downtrend for gold. Um, okay, before I go on to silver, let me just go back to gold just to address the question first. Yeah. Um, so weekly downtrend, monthly downtrend. Yep, I agree. It's just that if you look at the monthly chart, right, this candle, yes, is a close below the level, but we are about two weeks from the end of the month, so I'm very keen to see how this monthly candle will form because the monthly candle form close above back above back above the one two o level then maybe this is, might not consider a breakout because this candle is not the most convincing breakout candle. Alright, as compared to here. You see how this candle closed very uh, much lower than the support level? This one, not really. Okay, so yes, money is still on a downtrend though, no doubt about it. It's just that the breakout, breakdown lower is not as convincing. Um, weekly chart. Okay, sorry. On the weekly chart for gold, it is still on a downtrend. Okay, so if you're trading long term wise, you're absolutely right. Monthly and weekly is still a downtrend. You want to look for lower highs, look for resistance and take it down. Okay, uh, but because I'm just looking at the lower term time frame, the lower term time frame like the daily chart and the four hour chart is still against the weekly and monthly chart. So if the four hour and daily chart starts making, so showing signs that it wants to drop, then yes that will be a nice confirmation that the weekly and monthly chart is in control again to the downside. Alright, so it depends on which time frame you're taking up from. I'm just uh, drawing you different uh, uh, perspectives from different time frames. Okay, so looking at the silver, silver is definitely more bearish than gold um, because the silver trade I highlighted I think three webinars ago was a 1850 level. Okay, we broke a very nice 1850 level and it start it didn't go back to test of 1850 but it just you know slowly drifted downwards. Alright? So still on the downside, very very bearish on silver. I mean it tested support. Support was around the thousand six level, it's broke through slightly and now it's trying to consolidate a bit. So the weekly is on a downside bearish. Daily chart is a bit more consolidating, okay. But I'm more keen to look at this resistance trend line. This is what I drew last week. This is a very nice trend line. So anytime where we are close to the trend line resistance around the one six five zero level, all right, be very mindful of how the lower time frame will react to this level because if this le level is respected, then most probably we might drift downwards again double bottom or break a new low. Okay, so very interesting levels we are for gold and silver to see whether the downside bias is will continue. Okay, so that's silver for you. Just draw this trend line. This is a very nice trend line on the daily chart. Okay, right now we're not really there yet. Uh, so just look at, at these levels. Okay. Okay, uh, one more question on crude oil. Uh, let me just draw that. <laughs> Okay, let me try to look at the um, January contract to see whether I have a nice chart over there. The thing about futures is that sometimes the charts are not that um, complete. So let me just choose one that is nice looking. Okay, let's go to the February chart. Um, wow, there's only one, one analysis of this. Okay, there's not much. It's just very, very bearish. I think after it broke the eight nine nine thousand level on the crude on um, Brent, right? Basically, after it broke nine thousand, it just one direction. Okay, so right now it is bearish. Now, when you see such a bearish market, right, and you want to take it to the downside, what you can do is you can actually lower, go down to a lower time frame, even like a one hour, four hour chart to try to see any resistance to take it down from. 
Okay, this is a weekly chart, daily chart, very bearish as well. If you look at the four hour chart, okay, it's slightly a bit more consolidating. If you look at the two hour chart, yep, a bit more consolidating. Now, I don't have the best charts to analyze this because it's a futures market, so I don't have a complete chart. Um, but basically, what you want to look up for is the 8,000 level. Okay, yep. It was tested once, it has formed a higher low, but have a look at the 8,000 level to see whether the market will react to it. But it's definitely more bearish than bullish on the crude oil side. Very, very bearish. 8,000 is a key level you want to look out for. Okay, so for such such markets, when it's very bearish, I always tend to look for a shorter term setup to see whether I can join in the trend. Okay, of course, if the short term setup, if you're wrong, you try to join in the short, but you get stopped out, or right, just be a bit more patient, doesn't mean that the downtrend is ending. It just goes. It just means that maybe it wants to make a higher retracement. All right. All right. So that's uh, the markets for you on a technical perspective. Um, again, we do record our webinars and we try to upload it as soon as possible. So for those of you who want to watch uh, the recording again, please feel free to go to the website. Uh, do you have any other last questions before I end the session for today?